Okay, in this video we are going to talk about converting um, to spherical coordinates from rectangular. Specifically, we're going to figure out where all the formulas come from. So I'm not actually going to convert anything, I'm just going to come up with the formulas that you use to do it. Um, and so you might just wonder, like, why would you ever do that? Well, it turns out there are just some things that look pretty good if you convert them to spherical, and it makes things easier. Um, so some things, uh, there are some points that look pretty good. Uh, most points actually kind of don't look all that great. Uh, if you convert the equation of a sphere to spherical, it looks amazing. I mean, that's kind of the idea. Uh, if you have a cone, specifically cones that have the vertex at the origin, they end up looking very nice when you write them in spherical. And also half planes, if you kind of imagine um, a door that's opening the axis, if the axis it's opening on is the z-axis, you get a pretty nice equation when you write it in spherical. So those are some of the things that you would uh, see in a problem and they might trigger in your mind like, oh, maybe I should use spherical for these. So now we're going to work out where everything comes from. So to begin with, we just start in space, right? So we have x, we have y, we have z, those are our coordinate axes, and I'm going to plot a point. I'm going to say the coordinates of this point are um, x, y, and z. So I hope that's not confusing that we have the axes labeled that and also the coordinates of the point. I don't think it'll be very confusing. And the first thing we want to get in spherical, the distance from this point to the origin, we call rho. And that's kind of the segment. And the length of that segment is going to be just the distance formula. So the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's actually one of the formulas. And we're already done with that. So that's pretty good. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to convert x and y. And it turns out um, that before we get to spherical coordinates, we first just write x and y in polar coordinates. So that's kind of what we're going to go through right now. I'm going to add a lot of lines here. They're mostly parallel to the um, coordinate axes. And then I also connected, uh, kind of like project the point down into the xy plane, and then connect that to the origin, and then parallel to that up in space like along the z-axis, those red segments there. All right, so we have that. And if we're thinking in terms of polar, we get this angle theta, which is from the positive x-axis. Um, and then we also call this distance, the red segment, we call that r. And we want to work with that rectangle in the xy plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redraw it. So it looks kind of like this. I'm going to label up the things I know, and uh, I'm going to add in, so we have parallel lines cut by transversal. So this angle up here is also theta, which kind of helps some people figure out what's going on. So once we have that, we can rewrite x in terms of r and theta, because cosine of theta is x over r. We know that x is r times cosine of theta. And since uh, the sine of theta would be y over r, we know that y is equal to r times sine of theta. So we have a rho, which is already written in spherical, so that's good. And then we have x and y in polar. Um, I'm going to carry those things forward and figure out some more stuff. So these are the things that we figured out. And what we want to do now is uh, look at a new rectangle. So the new rectangle is the one that has um, rho as its diagonal. And there's an angle that we're interested in. It's the angle between the z-axis and rho, this angle here. And we call it phi. And so this segment is rho. And what I'm going to do to make it clear is I'm going to redraw that rectangle. You do this a lot in three dimensions. You take a figure and you just redraw uh, little kind of like plane slices in two dimensions and work out all your labels. So let's see what transfers here. Um, that's our. That's, um, we have phi, we have rho, and then that black length there is z. So this is really similar, I'm just gonna fill in the rest. So we have another z, another r, and then uh, parallel lines cut by transversal, so that's also phi. So we can do almost the same thing we did for x and y, uh, but we're gonna do it for z and for r. So if you look at the triangles, um, cosine of phi is z over rho, so z is equal to rho cosine of phi. And then uh, if you look at one of the triangles, you can see the sine of phi is r over rho. So r is going to be equal to rho times sine of phi. That's not always included as one of the formulas that you want to know, but you definitely want to know that, that r is equal to 
rho sine of phi. It comes up a lot. Um, so we have this. So now we kind of have like five formulas that we want to carry forward. So I'm going to carry rho, x, y, z, and r forward along with our pictures. So let's see. We have, let's just skip there. Uh, we have all of this. But if you look at it, uh, there's a ton of r's in all of these equations. So we got r, r, and r. We can actually make substitutions. So we're going to do that. So instead of saying x is r cosine theta, which is what I currently have, I'm going to say that I'm going to replace r with rho sine phi. So x is actually rho sine phi times cosine theta. And I'm going to do the same thing for y. So y is right now r sine theta. I'm going to make it rho sine phi sine theta. OK, so we're pretty much done, right? If we know what rho is, what phi is, and what theta is, so uh, if we know those things, we could actually figure out what x, y, and z are because uh, we have formulas for them. So let's uh, kind of summarize this on the next page. So we figured out that if we know x, y, and z, we could figure out that uh, rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, just the distance formula. We figured out that x is rho sine phi cosine theta. We figured out that y is rho sine phi sine theta. We figured out z is rho cosine of phi. And we also know that r is equal to rho sine of phi, which is very useful to know. Um, full disclosure, I don't remember x and y that way. I actually rearranged them. So I rearranged them. So it's rho cosine theta sine phi. I basically, I just moved the sine phi to the end so that in my head it kind of sounds like the polar coordinates, which I have memorized uh, uh, like much better, I want to say. They just come to mind faster. So when I write them that way, it's just a little easier to remember. But these are our formulas. So if we know rho, theta, and phi, we can find x, y, and z. If we know x, y, and z, we can actually work out rho, uh, theta, and phi. So we're good. All right, that's where all these formulas come from. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.